So now we're going to do sketching gradient functions. And this used to be only a minor part of the unit, but recently has become much more important. You can expect one of these on the exam. And one of the problems with that is that it's hard to find practice examples. For that reason, I wrote the Excel spreadsheet in Man vs Maths, which allows you, once you've turned on the macros, to go and practice generating a graph, drawing its derivative, generating a graph, drawing its derivative. And that way, you can get the practice you need without the problem that they haven't had in, in previous exams. So, we'll move on from there and show you how it's done. I'm going to sketch the gradient function of the graph below. It's a parabola, so it's of the form x squared, which means that its derivative, its gradient function, is of the form 2x. Now, it's in a positive parabola, its x squared coefficient is positive, so the derivative is also positive. And x squared turns to x, so it's gone from a parabola to a gradient function of a line. We're going to need to draw a line of positive gradient. And the gradient of the original parabola is zero at the turning point, there, where it turns. So that is the x-intercept of our gradient function. It's a line of positive slope, and it is zero when the gradient of the original function is zero. So on this side, the graph is heading downwards, so it has a negative gradient, so the gradient function is negative. On this side, the parabola is heading upwards, so the gradient function is a positive number, and it's zero is the turning point. Now, you have to note that the intercepts of the original line have no effect at all on the gradient function. Raising the parabola up doesn't change the gradient function. You still have a positive line with its turning point of the original function being the x-intercept. The exact gradient is not important. As long as the x-intercept is the turning point, we can change the gradient on our scaleless diagram. So, these are the rules. We take the basic form of the graph, we differentiate it to give the basic form of the gradient function, we mark the points on the x-axis where the original graph has its turning points, and then we sketch the gradient function through those turning points. We'll do a slightly harder one. We'll take a cubic. Now this is a negative cubic because it heads in the negative direction from a normal cubic. If we typed in y equals x cubed, it would go this way. So a negative cubic has a negative parabola once you find the differential. Three in front, but it's minus because it's a negative and it becomes a parabola. It's a negative parabola. And the turning points of the cubic are going to be the x-intercepts of our parabola. They are where our gradient function is zero. And there it is. Negative parabola with its x-intercepts being the turning points of the original function. Trying to interpret this from here to here, the original cubic has a negative gradient. So our gradient function is in the negatives. From this turning point onwards, the gradient function becomes increasingly negative. So our gradient function becomes increasingly negative. And in between is the bit where the gradient is positive. Where the graph is sloping upwards, so our area here is our positive bit. Now we can also interpret these ranges for any of these graphs. In this case, we have a positive cubic, so it is a negative gradient from this point as it turns down, and then it starts to even out to this point. The band in pink is where the original cubic graph has a negative gradient, and that is matched by its gradient function being negative 
the meat tank area. And one more time, it's what we do. We take the basic form, we find the differential, we find the basic form of our gradient function, we mark on the x-axis where the original graph has its turning points, and we sketch the gradient function through those turning points.